Today, we are going to discuss how you can improve at Call of Duty by playing other games, and we're starting right now. Hello and welcome. I am Amedio602, and if this is your first time on the channel and you want to improve at Call of Duty, start now by subscribing and ringing the notification bell so you don't miss out on tips, tricks, and tactics to make you a better player. In addition to Call of Duty, I play a lot of other games as well. In fact, I've just finished a game called Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing some clips from the final boss battle, as well as some story spoilers for that game. Before we do that though, I want to talk about something called the OODA loop, or the OODA loop. This term was first coined by a former fighter pilot named John Boyd. OODA stands for Observe, Orient, Decide, and Act. The OODA loop simply describes the decision-making process in our everyday lives. First, you make observations of the world around you. Then you orient yourself based on previous experiences with those observations. You decide what to do, and finally, you act on that decision. In the context of gaming in general, and specifically Call of Duty, the goal here is to closely watch your opponents, use past experiences to predict their next move, decide how to best counter that move, and then follow through with that decision as quickly as possible. As an example, think about how you would respond to the following situation. You're playing Call of Duty, and all of a sudden, someone starts shooting at you from an unknown location. The first thing I would do is try to get to cover and avoid damage before doing anything else. Because the enemy's location is unknown, you need more information before knowing which way to go to try to take cover. In other words, you need more observations. A few potential observations would be the sound of the enemy's gunfire, the direction of the bullets on your screen, the location of any red dots on your minimap, or callouts from your teammates. You can also try to orient yourself as quickly as possible. You would do this by applying your prior experiences in the game. For example, if there's a high ground location or a common sniping spot which has a line of sight to your location, then you could be making a safe assumption by just assuming that an enemy is in that spot and acting appropriately. This is where map knowledge becomes very, very useful. Once you've gathered all the observations you can and applied your orientation, it's time to make a decision. The decision, of course, is which direction do you go in order to take cover from the incoming threat, and your ability to quickly act on that decision could mean the difference between life or death. And this is just one simple example. The OODA loop happens all the time for every decision you make oh yeah, baby. every day of the week. Round one, fight! Playing Call of Duty and other fast-paced games helps to reduce the time that it takes to make these decisions because quick decision-making is rewarded while slow decision-making is penalized. You lose! As a little bit of background, this game was developed by From Software, a company which is very popular for its Dark Souls series. The Dark Souls games are known for being very difficult and unrelenting whenever the player makes a mistake. And while Sekiro, strictly speaking, is not a Dark Souls game, there are several elements of the gameplay which have carried over. In this game, when you take damage, it's massive. Sometimes you don't even have enough time to heal, and in a lot of cases, you're punished for even trying to heal, and this follows suit very closely from the other games from From Software. I think I said From three times in that sentence. Anyway, my very first From Software title was a game called Demon Souls on the PS3. The very first boss for that game, I think it took me about eight hours of in-game time to make it to the boss and finally defeat him. My overall playtime for Sekiro, or Sekiro, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it even though it's the name of the game, <laughs> was right around 50 hours, and this is coming from an experienced player who had played these types of games before. I wouldn't be surprised if it took a new player 100 hours or more to complete this game. But anyway, back to how playing Sekiro and other fast-paced games can help you get better at Call of Duty. When facing a boss, or really any enemy in Sekiro, your OODA loop needs to be on point, or you will be immediately punished. For example, there are actually four different phases in this boss battle. The first phase is an enemy that you fight earlier in the game, except he has some new moves. Once you've perfected your technique for dealing with him, 
then it's time to face the real final boss of the game, who has a completely different moveset. And in fact, after the first phase, he adds to his moveset, and then after the second phase, he adds even more to it. Ishin the Sword Saint actually uses a sword, a spear, a gun, and lightning against you in this, and you need to memorize all his different attacks and come up with a good way to counter or avoid each one. As an example, the final two phases of this boss battle have a leaping attack with a spear, and if you dodge to your 11 o'clock position, then this attack misses you. However, if you dodge to your 1 o'clock position instead, the spear hits you for massive damage, and of course if you take enough damage to die, then you have to start the entire fight over again. And you can actually see in this gameplay, it's kind of funny how many times I have to go into the menu and find these special items that I've saved up for the entire gameplay and then use them just to beat the final boss. You'll notice too that when I go to use items, I'm still engaging the OODA loop. I have to observe that the boss is far enough away from me that I won't take damage for trying to heal. In some cases where I think the boss may be too close to me, I try to lure him into using an attack which I know I'll be able to dodge. This is orientation and using past experiences to try to get him to do the same move over and over again. As soon as I see an opening, I decide that it's time to use my healing item and then I act on it immediately. Now in a real multiplayer game against real people, you have to keep in mind that they're also going through this OODA, observe, orient, decide, and act loop. And a really good strategy to defeat them is to get inside their head and confuse them. In fact, a big part of Boyd's OODA theory is to use the chaos from the battlefield to your advantage and to direct it at your enemy as best you can. Of course, this doesn't work so well against computer-controlled AI bosses like Sekiro, but it works great in online multiplayer for Call of Duty. In fact, when you can get inside somebody's head and misdirect them into thinking you're going to be in one place and then show up in another place, that's one of the easiest ways to get a kill. Leave a comment down below with some of your favorite strategies to dismay and confuse your opponents. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. For anyone who's new around here, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more Call of Duty tips, tricks, and tactics like this one. And check out some of my other videos on the screen now. As always, thank you very much for watching. Farewell.